First, Father, I need you, Lord. I can't do it without you, that's for sure. Father, I ask, Lord, that you would uh, just use me as a vessel today to bring forth your word, Lord, in that it will, like you said, Lord, will accomplish everything that's been set forth to do. Today is uh, just a, a new day, Father, a new start, a new time, a new beginning. You're doing something, Father, and, and I'm glad that you are revealing it to us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I'm going to get started. Um, I want to talk to you guys today about um, Abraham. I want to connect some dots for you, okay? Um, really some important things. Um, if we go back to Father Abraham, Abraham was in Ur of the Chaldees when he was actually called out, okay? I want to connect some dots with you right there real quick. Uh, Ur of the Chaldees is Babylon, is Mesopotamia. Thank you. And um, Abraham was called out of it, and I'm going to tell you why. If you know, if we go back to the very beginning, we'll find out that after the flood of Noah, Noah lived 350 years after the flood, okay? So, um, and during this time is when Abraham, Abraham was born uh, in the year from the flood, from the, I mean, from the beginning of Adam in 1948. Now, which is pretty amazing because Israel became a nation in 1948, meaning that when Adam fell, you know, it was 1,656 years and God flooded the earth. Remember? First 2,000 years of man's history. Well, 1948 years after Adam had fell and he was put out of the garden is when Abraham had came. He was, you know, Tira and, and we'll get into all of that. And they in Ur of the Chaldees, okay, they in Babylon. And it was during Abraham's time, and Abraham's father was Terah. And I'm going to read a little bit about that, read that to you. But um, Abraham's father was an idol maker, and I'm going to show you that. That's in Joshua chapter 24. He was an idol maker of, of the idols that he made was Set, which was Egypt, from Egypt. And when Nimrod began to escalate in his kingdom and rise up, we see that in uh, Genesis chapter 11, um, there was a decree that was going out, um, and you could find this in the book of Jasher, which is quoted from, from the Bible. Um, is it all not written in the book of Jasher? And we'll get into that later. But this is just kind of a little background. What was going on in Ur of the Chaldees? God had told Abraham to leave his father and, you know, that he was going to bring him to the land of Canaan. Well, we find that, um, that as the rise of Nimrod had, had, was coming up, um, Abraham's father, Terah, was an idol maker of Set. So here it is, Nimrod is posing, you know, he's a god, he's a, he's a Nephilim, he has, you know, he's about 18 foot tall. Yeah, he was a monster. He was really, he's depicted as holding a lion, you know, in his arm right here, around his neck, a full-grown lion, and his legs of the lion only comes to his waist. Nimrod, Nimrod. So he was 18 foot tall, he was a giant. He was being worshipped as a god, and he's the one that cried out to God that he would take vengeance. He was going to build the Tower of Babel all the way up and take vengeance for what he did to his forefathers when God destroyed the earth by water. He was going to take revenge on God. And so anyway, long story short, uh, Abraham's father is an idol maker. And this is why God had called Abraham out, but it says that now it came to a time, and we're going to read this in Genesis 12, that we find that, you know, uh, Abraham, Terah, and his brother, and his wife, and all that, they leave and they go to Hebron. And they're there, t they're there seven years, and then Abraham's father dies. The reason he has to move to Hebron is because in Hebron, that was another big idol-making city. And they worship Set as well, and that's what he did for a living. So Abraham's father was an idol maker. And they moved to Hebron, and that's where he stayed for seven years. And then finally he dies, and God tells Abraham, you know, um, I want you to leave your father and your mother and your homeland. I'm going to bring you to a land. He didn't know where he was going, but he was going to bring him to the land that flows with milk and honey. 
So um, it's very important because we find out um, if we just would kind of look at a map, if this was a, just a, a big map, you know, if this is Israel, this is Mesopotamia and Babylon over here. We find that God calls them out of or Ur of the Chaldees, and we see that Abraham and Tira and all of them are going to read. They leave and they go north up to Hebron. Hebron is north of Israel, up here. They stay there for seven years, and then finally his father dies. And now Abraham comes down into the land, and when he comes down into the land, he has an encounter with God. And this encounter that he has with God is in Shechem. And we're going to get into what's so important about Shechem. Why Shechem? And this is, this is new revelation to me. And um, in, in the midst of my studies, I found uh, some things out from another brother, Rob Skiba. And, um, and this is the way the Lord was leading me down the path and began to open things up to me and show me some stuff. But, um, so let's uh, really get into it. The message today is called um, the cutting of a covenant or uh, the renewal of a covenant the cutting of a covenant now mom my mom will really know this and, uh, because we have talked about this a few times and sure I'm sure some of the uh, other you guys you remember when Abraham had come into the land um, that Abraham God was gonna make a covenant with him and he cut the pieces in half remember and it says that and God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Abraham and God walked between the pieces at this covenant and God you know began to share some things with Abraham so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna we're gonna read a good bit today because I want you to catch the full meaning of what it is that God is speaking to you and I today so and always we're blessed when we you know read from God's Word so um, first thing I want to do is I want you to open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 12 and we're going to start reading um, um, actually I'm going to start in Genesis chapter 11 verse 27 and I'm going to read through uh, some things Genesis 11 we're going to start in verse 27 Genesis 11 27 tell me when you guys are there Genesis 11 27 let's start reading now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, and Abram Nahor, and Haran, and Haran begat Lot. Now Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his nativity in Ur of the Chaldees. So this is, you know, uh, Abraham's father had three sons, and one of them dies in Ur of the Chaldees, okay? And Abraham and Nahor took them wives and, um, of and Abram and Nahor took them wise. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah, and the daughter of Haran, um, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. But Sarah was barren, she had no children, and Terah took Abram, his son, and Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, which was the son of Haran. Haran had died and Sarah his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth from, uh, with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan, and they came unto Haran and dwelt there. So here you see Abraham's father, Terah, is leaving Babylon, okay? Because Babylon is in full blown right now. And the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. So that's where he died at. Okay. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from the house, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse them that curseth thee, which is really important, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. We know that it was through Abraham, Yeshua came, Jesus. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jacob begat the twelve patriarchs, and through the line of the tribe of Judah came Jesus, which is the seed that would bless the nations. So Abraham deported as the Lord, Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarah his wife, and Lot his brother, 
brother, his brother's son, and, and all the substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had, uh, had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto this place of Shechem, unto the plain of Moray. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there he built it an altar unto the Lord, whom appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto the mountains of east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west of him and Hai on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. So when Abraham comes into the land, the first place he comes into is Shechem. Okay? It's the first place. And it was Shechem, when he comes here, this is the first place where Abraham builds an altar unto the Lord. Let me tell you a little bit about Shechem. Um, Abraham's father was an idolater. He's an, uh, he made idols and he served all the gods. Okay, when Abraham comes into Shechem, um, uh, the word Shechem in the Hebrew Strongs is 7927. It means shoulders. Shechem means shoulders to, you know, they bore the Ark of the Covenant on their shoulders. But it also, it, it means, it means shoulders or, or the upper part of the back between the shoulders, okay? So it's the part between your back, there's a divide where your shoulder blades come together. It's right between there. And it's, he called this place Shechem. Now in Shechem, there's two mountains in Shechem and they're right beside one another. And if you look at it, this would be one shoulder, this would be another shoulder, because that's what it's called. And it's between the shoulders where he sets an altar and builds an altar. Y'all with me? Okay, let me move this up. So it's between, Abraham comes right here and he builds this altar between Mount Gershom and Mount Ebal. Well, Mount Gershom, it, it means blessings or cutters. Uh, this is the blessing, we're going to get into that. And Mount Ebal, it means, um, it means bare and stony. And we're going to see why it means curses. It means bare and stony, but curses. But this is the first place where Abraham comes into and God makes a covenant here. This is the very place where Abraham had the covenant of circumcision. This is the very same place where Abraham divided the pieces in half. God put him to sleep, gave him a dream. God walked between the pieces because God was cutting a covenant with him. That's why you find Mount Gershom means cutter or he's cutting a covenant. This is the first place of a covenant, which is very important. I mean, like why? Wow. And we'll get into it. So we see, we go, uh, Shechem was the first parcel of land owned by the house of Abraham. And we find this in Genesis uh, uh, chapter 33, verse 18, 19, and 20. But before I go to that, I want you guys to go up to Joshua. Open your Bibles, go to Joshua. That's the fifth book of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, it's the sixth, Joshua. Um, and go to Joshua chapter 24, I'm going to show you uh, Abraham's dad. He was an idol maker, Joshua chapter 24. Joshua begins to, um, this is when Joshua dies and he's rehearsing a covenant back unto the children of Israel. And that covenant still stands for you and me today, and I'm going to show you why. Because it had a deeper meaning. Now we're going to go to um, uh, Joshua chapter 24, verse 1. And watch this. Um, if you remember, when um, you're going to find out that Shechem is in Gilgal. Okay? Remember when the children of Israel, when Joshua crossed the Jordan, 
you find when Joshua crosses the Jordan and he goes into the land that flows with milk and honey, he builds an altar of 12 stones in the middle of the Jordan. Remember that? That's where Jesus came and he was baptized on that altar. That's the beginning of his ministry. This is when they was crossing into the land. But God said, also build an altar in Gilgal as a memorial, as a remembrance. So the first place that the children of Israel go and build an altar is in Shechem between Gershom and, uh, and Ebel. Wow. No, this, okay. no, this, this, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to read it to you. But so when the children of Israel cross, see here's the Jordan River. The children of Israel, they come and it's Gilgal, but in Gilgal is Shechem. This is where God tells them to build that altar. These, you know, so it's in Shechem. And remember, when they go to Gilgal, which means, you know, a circuit or a cycle, a full circle, it was there that God told them, now circumcise all of the children of Israel there in Shechem. Wow, that's where Abraham was circumcised. Because he, it's a cutting of a covenant. God was making a covenant right there in this place. And it's very important. On one side, you got blessings. And on the other side, you got curses. And right in the middle, we're going to find out what's going on right here. Between these two. Now watch this. Joshua chapter 24. And Joshua, God, this is the end of Joshua's life. This is the end of his life, okay? And we know that Joshua didn't run out all the, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites. He didn't get them all out of the land because Joshua didn't fulfill. Joshua wasn't the Savior. He was a picture of the Savior to come. Joshua's name means Yeshua. Yeshua is going to be the one that brings us into the land and cleanses the whole land. But Joshua, remember, he made a covenant with some men that came with bread and acted like they was come from afar off. And, you know, and so he didn't cleanse the land. And Joshua tells you that. So let's read right here. Watch this. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel. Check this out. Now you got to realize Joshua, when he crossed over in the Jordan, Joshua was, uh, he was 90 years old when he crossed the Jordan. He reigned in the land that flew with milk and honey, Canaan, for 20 years. He died at 110. So now Joshua just crosses the Jordan. They come to Gilgal, which is Shechem, and they go in and they take a, a majority of the land, but they don't run all the inhabitants out of it. So now Joshua is about to die, okay? So where does he gather them? He gets all the people back. He says, let's go back by the Jordan. This is what he's doing. He's bringing them back to where they crossed over and come into the land. And if this will connect with Deuteronomy, the end of Deuteronomy, where Moses says, when you go over in the land, he lists out blessings and curses, right? That's why he was instructed to go to bring the children of Israel to Gilgal to read the law before them and blessings on one side and curses on the other. So, and this is where we find out in Joshua. Joshua says, choose you this day. Joshua 24, whom you will serve. Because if you serve God, you're going to be blessed. And if you serve self and idols, then you're going to be cursed. It's really simple. Do you want to be blessed in your life or do you want to be cursed in your life? It's all up to you. Watch this. Let's read. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem. And he called for the elders of Israel and for their heads and for the judges and for the officers and presented themselves before God. This is where they're presenting themselves before God. Wow. You no, know, this cutting of a covenant was here. This is the first cutting of a covenant that we find. Why was the cutting of the covenant here first? It says uh, in verse 3, and it says, uh, wait, and Joshua, verse 2, And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the river, the great river in old. So Joshua, he's in the promised land side. Your fathers dwelt on the other side. That's in the other side of the Jordan. That's eastward. That's in Babylon. That's, that's what he's saying, telling them. Even Terah, the father of Abram, the father of Nahor, and they served other gods. Wow. Wow. Abraham, get away from your father who's the idol maker. Get away from those who worship other gods. Get away from them. 
And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the, the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. And Isaac was a picture of Christ. And I gave unto Isaac Jacob and Esau, and I gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. So this is where the birth of the children of Israel come from. Jacob and his children went into Egypt. Remember. I sent Moses also and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt according to that which I uh, did among them, and afterwards I brought you out of Egypt. And I brought your fathers out of Egypt. Egypt was the altar. Remember that? Egypt is an altar. God sacrificed all the firstborn died in Egypt. They went from the altar. Remember uh, this, the altar? And then from the altar they went to the Red Sea, the laver. There was a covenant. At, at Egypt as well that was made the firstborn died right and they put the blood on the door that was a cutting of the covenant right there right yes. All right. And he said, um, And I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came to the sea. They, so they went from the brazen altar, the place of death, to the sea. And the Egyptians pursued you after you, your fathers with chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Lord, and when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. Wow. There was a separation when you call out the name of Jesus between light and darkness. Right? Watch this. And I brought the sea upon them and covered them and your eyes have seen what I've done in Egypt and ye dwelt in the wilderness a long season. God, he flooded them. Just like in the very beginning with Noah, he killed all of, you know, all of that back then with a flood. He killed the whole Egyptian army with a flood. God is the same yesterday, today and forever. Remember that? It says Pharaoh pursued hard behind the children of Israel with 600 horsemen, 600 chariots and 600 men into the sea and God brought the flood. That's the beast. 666 following hard behind him, but God crushes the enemy. Know this too as well. When you take a stand for Jesus Christ and you make a, a statement or you put the blood or you accept Jesus Christ in your life, you leave Egypt or you leave the idle place or whatever it is, the enemy comes instantly after you. Immediately he's coming for you. Right? Because you've left his camp. You're no longer part of his system. He wants you dead. No, long, no, no matter how long you served him. He wants you dead. Watch this. But God made a covenant. And that covenant stands today. It's a covenant of faith and believing. In verse 8. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites. Amorites, that's Og. That's the king of Bashan. That was a giant. Why? Remember, because that's what he said. When you go into the land, kill them all. Because they all have that seed in them. He says, And I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side of the Jordan. That's, you know, the possession that God was given. And they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand, that ye might possess their land, and I destroyed them before you. Then Balak, you remember Balak, remember him? The son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and war against Israel and sent and called Balaam, the son of Boar, and, uh, to, uh, to curse you, put a curse on you. And remember it says, and, and Balak brought uh, Balaam up on a high mountain and he seen the whole outreaches of the encampment. They were set up in a cross, right? Remember that? I, I, I taught you guys that. And when he brought him up there, he said, curse him. He brought him up on a mountain. And when, you know, he's looking at him, he says, I can't, I can't curse what God has blessed. It was set up in that cross, right? Wow, amazing stuff. And he says, and you went over the Jordan and came unto Jericho. What? Let me go back to verse 10. But I would not hearken unto Balaam, therefore he blessed you still, so I delivered you out of his hand. And you went over the Jordan and came unto Jericho, and the men of Jericho fought against you, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Gergesites, the Hivites and the Jebusites and I delivered them into your hand and I sent a hornet before you which drove them out from before you even to the two kings of the Amorites but not with thy sword nor with thy bow and I have given you a land for which you did not labor cities which you didn't build nor that, uh, to, for you to dwell in of vineyards and olive, uh, olive yards um, which you planted which ye planted not 
to do, do ye, you eat from. You didn't plan them, but uh, you eaten from them. Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth. Listen, this is Joshua renewing the covenant with them 20 years after they're in the land. Joshua's about to die. So what does Joshua do? He does the same exact thing that Moses did. Before Moses died and went up on on Mount, uh, on uh, what was the Mount? Mount uh, no, no, no. He went up on uh, Mount Nebo. Before he dies, he went up on Mount Nebo and he, he says, he, you know, he says, he gives them blessings and curses in Deuteronomy chapter 29. If you do this, you'll be blessed. But if you do that, then you'll be cursed. And then he goes up on Mount Nebo, which means height, and he dies. That's where Satan took, that's where Lucifer took Jesus when he attempted him to get into a whole other message. So here it is, the death of Moses, he's rehearsing, cur he's rehearsing blessing and curses. Here, the death of Joshua, he's 110 years old, he's about to die, so he brings them all back to the place where they built the first altar, where God cut a covenant with them right there for blessings and curses, and he's telling them, remember, remember what the word of the Lord said. This is why he's here. He brings them back to Shechem. He makes a divide. He's right in here in the middle. All the people are gathered up, but he does something very interesting. And we're going to get into that. He says... He says, uh, and I sent the hornet before you in verse 12, which drove him out. All right, now, okay, verse 14. And he says, now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. That's amazing right there. He's likening Babylon with Egypt. It's our society today. Babylonian and Egypt. Same thing that's going on right now. The all C and I, the pyramid the Tower of Babel, you know, all of that. Same today. Here it is. And if it seem evil, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. I believe that's what the, 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 the word for us today is. God is telling us today. You know, He's bringing a covenant before us again. We need to make a clear, distinct decision, choice, whether we're going we're gonna to remain in blessings or we're going to be cursed because right now is a critical time that we're living in. Okay? Um, and it says in verse 15, And if it seem evil unto you, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, Joshua says, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord and serve other gods. For the Lord our God, He is that has brought us up in our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and which did uh, uh, those great signs in our sight preserved us in all his way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we passed. These are the children now 20 years later being brought back. They were, these are the ones that was in the wilderness, that traveled, that, where there was no law. They wasn't circumcised in the wilderness. There was nothing going on in the wilderness. When they came over to the other side, he brought these heads 20 years later and said, hey, this is where God cut a covenant with you and, 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 and you've been circumcised here. There was a cutting away of your flesh made right here. So remember who you are. Remember that God made a covenant with you here. Don't pick up, you know, after I'm gone and dead, begin to serve these other gods again. Because Joshua was there to keep them, you know, in line. <coughs> and they said, um, it says uh, in verse 18, and the Lord drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for He is our God. I wrote right there, He is my God. He is my God. His name is Yeshua. And Joshua said unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for He is an holy God. He is a jealous God, and He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. Wow. If ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do to you hurt and consume you after he hath uh, done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves that ye have chosen you, the Lord, to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now, therefore, put away, said he, the strange gods which were among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord of Israel. Listen, this is where the children 
children of Israel crossed over and when they took down Jericho, Achan took the idol, remember, took the gold, the silver, and the purple Babylonian garments and hid them in his tent. This is right after that a covenant is cut with them. Put away the gods, the idols, and the things. But here it is. And Achan's whole family was, was destroyed. Joshua said, listen, he cut a covenant with them when they, cut a, when they came across into this land. Just had told Achan. Just had told all the tribes of Israel. If you do this, God will turn against you. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. But Achan leaves. They go take out Jericho. He takes the Babylonian garments, the silver and the gold, and hides them within his tent. That means symbolically within himself. He coveted the things of the world. And what happened? Joshua said, bring them forward. His sin affected other people. Because of his sin, about 34 others died when they went to just go take out little bitty old Ai. He was responsible for the death of others because of his sin. Right? God said, hey, Joshua, they have sin in the camp. Bring them forward. And Achan, his wife, his kids, and his animals was all stoned to death and burned and made an ash heap. That's what Joshua was saying. He will not pardon your transgressions. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Either serve God or serve Babylonian idols. But there's a clear distinction between Shechem's either right or left, or left or right. You can't be in the middle. You know why? Because the middle is the altar. That's the place of death. Wow. People said, oh no, I'm not really for God and I'm not really for the world. I'm, you know, kind of by myself. Well, guess what? <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> That's right. Well, I'm kind of, you know, I kind of live the world and I kind of live over here too. You're dead. Nothing. Let's just, let's keep, I'm sorry, I'm getting kind of loud. Whew, <laughs> son. Oh, I forgot to turn it down, turn it down a little bit. Um, but anyway, he says, uh, and then he goes on in verse uh, 23. He says, uh, Now therefore, put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and his voice will we obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a statute in the ordinance in Shechem. Here it is. He's renewing the covenant again. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God and took a great stone and set it under an oak that was the, uh, by the sanctuary of the Lord. Wow, the, the sanctuary. That means the tabernacle of Moses was set up right here. The sanctuary of the Lord was set up. Watch. Boy, it gets really, really good. Why is it all happening here first? Right when you come through the Jordan. Remember I said Jordan means the sender. Jesus was baptized in Bethabaray. Bethabaray means the doorway or the threshold of the door or the gate. So as soon as they came through the Jordan, the gate, they're coming to a place where God made a covenant with them between two mountains. What is so important about these two mountains? Amazing things. I mean, if you go back to Sinai, there was Mount Sinai and Mount Horeb. One mountain with two peaks. If you go to Jerusalem, there was, you know, uh, Mount, uh, Mount Moriah and the Mount of Olives. And what did those two mountains represent? Law and grace. Remember? The law. Jesus died on that mountain. Grace, the, the olive. Here it is. We come to another place. They're between Mount Gershom and Mount Ebal. Two mountains again. One is blessing, the other is curses. Why is this the first place that God takes them? Could this possibly be? Could this possibly be the original place where the two trees were? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. Wow. Let's see. Why Shechem? Why Shechem? He said, And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law, and he took a great stone. We know that, who's that great stone? 
The great stone represents Jesus Christ, the great stone that the builders rejected. Joshua, whose name means Jesus. And he set it up there underneath an oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said unto all the people, verse 27, Behold, this stone shall be a witness unto us. A stone is a witness. Jesus was the stone that the builders rejected. He was the witness. Whoever falls upon this stone will be saved. But whoever this stone falls upon will be crushed. Trip me up and let me fall on him. Because I don't want him to fall on me. Because if I fall on him, he will help me up. But if he falls on me, he will crush me into the ground. And Joshua said unto all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness for us. For it hath heard all the words of the Lord which he spake unto us. The stone heard the words. The Bible says, if you don't bow down and worship the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, the stones will cry out. He said that stone will cry out against you. The stone is a witness. This covenant was written in stone. Wow. It shall be therefore witness unto you, lest you deny your God. So Joshua let the people depart every man into his heritage. And it came to pass after these things that Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being 110 years old. Joshua was 90 when he crossed over. He was in the land 20 years. Very important. It's a whole nother message. Let's keep reading. Let's read some pretty interesting things about this place right here. We know this is where Abraham came and cut the first covenant. Right? Let's, let's read a few things. Shechem is the first parcel of land owned by the house of Abraham. Genesis chapter 33, verse 18, 19, and 20. You don't have to read that. He purchased it right there. Uh, it was purchased for 100 pieces of silver. Okay? Check this out. Do you remember Shechem in the Bible? This is where Jacob came and stayed. He stayed in he stayed in Shechem. Jacob did. Listen to this. Yeah, this is that was by the no, that was by the Jabbok River. What's wrong? So listen to this. Get, check this out. This is where get your attention. You need to listen. This is where Dinah was raped by Shechem. Wow. Dinah was raped by Shechem here. This is Shechem. Remember Jacob came into Shechem? And when Dinah went out to meet the other daughters that was in Shechem, it says the owner of the land, Shechem, that's why it's named Shechem himself, is the one that raped her. Let's read it so you'll see it. So um, go to Genesis chapter 34. I want you to see it. Genesis chapter 34. And I'm going to read that to you. Because all of this is very important. You're going to see how it all ties in. Genesis chapter 34, and I'm going to start reading. The defilement of Dinah. Now, Dinah's name means judgment. Wow. Dinah's name means judgment. Right? It means judgment. Verse, uh, Genesis chapter 34, verse 1, and I'm going to start reading right there. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. This is where Jacob is set up. Okay, And when Shechem, the son of Hamar, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw, saw her, he took her, and he lay with her and defiled her. And his soul clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob. And he loved the Dasmal and spake kindly unto the Dasmal. And Shechem spake unto his father Hamar, saying, Get me this Dasmal to wife. And Jacob heard... Um, that he had defiled Dinah his daughter. Now his sons were in the cattle field, and Jacob held his peace until they were come in. And Hamor, the father of Shechem, went unto Jacob to commune with him. And the sons of Jacob came out of the field when they had heard it. And the men were grieved and were very wroth because he had wrought folly in Israel in line with Jacob's daughter, which thing ought not to be done. And Hamor communed with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longeth for your daughter. I pray that you'll give her to wife. For you know what Shechem means, the cutting of a covenant. He slept with her. 
and defiled her and broke the hymen, the veil, and there was bloodshed. And her name means judgment. That's why judgment falls upon them. Listen what happens. Now, you can call that a female circumcision. Dinah is a female circumcision. Watch this. They know what they... This is serious stuff, man. It's amazing how God... And he says, in verse 9, And make ye marriages with us, and give us your daughters unto us, and take you daughters unto you. But God said, don't do it. Remember? Don't do it. Don't intermingle your seed. Right? And ye shall dwell with us in the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade ye therein and possess therein. And Shechem said unto, uh, and Shechem said unto her father and unto her brethren, Let me find grace in your eyes, and what shall you say unto me I will give? Ask me uh, never so much a dowry and a gift. Tell me what it is you want, and I will give it according to as you have said it unto me. But give me this dazzle of wife. They'd be going against God to do this, to make covenant with the enemy. And the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamor, his father, deceitfully, and said, Because you have defiled Dinah, our sister. And they said unto them, We cannot do this thing to give our sister to one that is uncircumcised, for that we, uh, for that were a reproach unto us. But in this we will consent unto you. If you will be as we, every male of you be circumcised. Wow! Wow, oh, wow, let's check this out. So now Abraham in, in, in his covenant is cut of circumcision right here. That's a cutting of a covenant. Then we find, you know, uh, when Joshua crosses the Jordan, we have this cutting of a covenant again. Now Dinah is defiled. That's a, it was a covenant, but you know, not, it's his blood deal again. And now they are saying, okay, now you want to be with us? Now all of you men be circumcised. Place of cut of, circumcision was covenant. A place of, you know, a cutting of a covenant. Right. He says, um, and in verse 16, he says, And then we will give our daughters unto you, and we'll take your daughters unto us, and we'll dwell with you, and we'll become one people. But if you do not hearken unto us and be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and we'll be gone. And their words please Hamar and Shechem and Hamar's son. And the young men deferred not to do the thing because he had delight in Jacob's daughter, and he was more honorable than all the house of his father. And Hamar and Shechem, his son, came into the gate of the city and communed with all the men of the city, saying, These men are peaceable with us, for let uh, them dwell in the land and trade therein for the land. Behold, it is a large enough for them. And let us take daughters uh, to us for wives, and let us give unto them daughters. Only herein will we consent unto us. Only herein will the men consent unto us for to dwell with us, to be one people. Um, if every male among us is circumcised as they are circumcised, shall not the cattle of their substance and every beast of theirs be ours? Wow. It plans us to do something. You know, take what they got. Only let us consent unto them, and they will dwell with us. And unto Hamar and unto Shechem his sons he hearkened. All that went out of the gate of that city, every male was circumcised. All that went out of the gate of the city. And it came to pass on the third day, when they were sore, that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brethren. Now, Simeon means hearing, and Levi is the law. Levi means joined. So when Simeon, one of the tribes, heard it, he joined himself to the law because Dinah represents judgment and they brought the sword on them on the third day when they were all sore and killed every male in the entire city. That, that's a bloody place there, brother. It's a bloody place. And it says, um, and I'm going to go to verse 25. And it came to pass on the third day when they were sore that the two sons of Jacob and Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brethren, took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly and slew all the males. And they slew Hamar and Shechem his son with the edge of the sword and took Dinah out of Shechem's house and went out. And the sons of Jacob came upon the slain and the spoil of the city because they had uh, defiled their sister. Let's, keep, let's go on. So that's the other thing that happened right here. You know, uh, Dinah was defiled and they slew the whole city of Shechem, all the males. And Genesis 37, 
Joseph is sent. Remember Joseph is sent out to look for his brethren? Wow, check this out. Remember where Shechem is? Shechem is right by the Jordan. Remember when Joshua crossed the Jordan? He ran into the angel. Remember? The angel of the Lord with the sword. We know that was Yeshua. That was Jesus, you know, uh, before he was actually he come into the earth, really. He's, he's the angel of the Lord. He's the leader of the army of the host of the Lord. He's the angel of the Lord. In Genesis 37, Joseph is sent to look for the, his brethren in Shechem. Wow, this is where Joseph is. He's in Shechem. He went to go look for his brothers. And in verse 15, he meets um, a man. You know who that man was? The angel of the Lord. Who tells him, your brothers are in Dothan, meaning wells. So here it is. He leaves, he goes to Shechem. And the angel of the Lord, the book of Jasher says, let's go to it. Uh, Genesis 37. Let me show it to you. Genesis 37. Joseph's family sends against him. All right, um, and we go down. This is uh, in uh, verse 11. This is right after Joseph has these dreams. Okay, in verse 11, and his brethren envied him, but his father observed the sayings. And in verse 12, and his brethren went to feed the, their father's flocks in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed their flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said unto them, Here I am, Joseph said. And he said unto him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out uh, of the valley of Hebron, and, and he came to Shechem, right? And a certain man found him, and a certain man, and a certain man, and a certain man, Luke chapter 10, and a certain man. That's right. That word, and, this, and it was a certain man who saw the man and had compassion on this man. The word certain, it actually will take you back. And literally, in the book of Jasher, it says, and the certain means, and the angel of the Lord met Joseph in Shechem. Wow. The angel of the Lord. It's pretty amazing that now Joshua crosses the Jordan and the angel of the Lord is there. And now Joseph goes there and the angel of the Lord's there. You know what else happened here? This is where Abraham uh, ran into uh, Melchizedek, king of Salem, king of Jerusalem. Wow. Why or why this area? Why? Let's keep going. Um, so um, we read uh, that Dinah was defiled there. Um, Joseph is sent, and um, it was right outside this place in Dothan, which means well, where Joseph was thrown into the well. We know, and that's how you know that goes into Egypt. Why Shechem? Why is Shechem so important? Um, let's go. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 29. Deuteronomy 11. Deuteronomy 11. Deuteronomy 11:29. 11, um, let me see what it says. Oh yeah, here we go, right here. Check this out. I'm gonna start in verse 27. This is Moses. Um, reminding the children of Israel. Watch what he tells them before they cross over. And he says in verse 26, Behold, I set before you this day blessings and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I commanded you this day, and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside out of the way which I've commanded you this day to go after other gods which you have not known. And we know what happened when they crossed Achan and all this stuff. So this is Moses telling them back to him. Now here's the commandments of Moses given to Joshua as well. This is how Joshua knows where to go. And it shall come to pass, verse 29, when the Lord thy God hath brought thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put a blessing upon Mount Gershom, the blessing on Mount Gershom. And Moses says, and the curse on Mount Ebal, a curse. Remember David, how he got uh, Abigail? Remember who was Ebal or Nabal? Nabal was a mean, wicked man who wouldn't give David's army. Nabal, Ebal, it's the same. So God cursed him and he died. Yeah. If you, in that amazing story. Yeah. Um, so anyway, 
He says, um, And it shall come to pass, verse 29, When the Lord your God hath brought thee into the land, whether thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put a blessing upon Mount Gershom, and a curse upon Mount Evil. I want you to know something, that I am rehearsing this, this lesson in cursing, curses before you again today. The Word of God stands. You know that, right? You're responsible to choose you this day whom you're going to serve. The Word of God will not return void. To leave Him and walk away from Him will only produce curses in your life. You realize that? It says, um, verse 30, Are there not on the other side of the Jordan by, um, let me go back up. And it shall come to pass, when the Lord thy God hath brought thee unto the land, whether thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessings upon Mount Gershom, and Gershom means cut or cutters, and curses upon Mount Ebal, which means bare or stony. There's nothing there. Are they not on the other side of the Jordan, Moses says, by the way where the sun goeth down? in the land of the Canaanites which dwell in the campaign over against Gilgal beside the plains of Moray. Wow, Gilgal. Right? That's where we know. God sent them when they crossed over. Go to Gilgal. Why? Because I'm going to cut a covenant with you right there. Because this is the place of covenant. Because I believe this is the first place that God cut a covenant. Watch. Let's keep reading. So why is Shechem so important? And we got blessings on one side and curses on the other. Could this be the original place where the two trees were? The tree, the olive tree, which is the tree of, the, uh, of life, and the fig tree, the knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Let's see. Turn you to, well, let me go to this first. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 27. Deuteronomy 27. Deuteronomy chapter 27. Listen to this. Deuteronomy 27. And Moses with the elders of Israel commanded the people saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. That's the Lord rehearsing it to you and me. And it shall be on the day when you shall pass over the Jordan. We have a promised land that we're looking forward, looking forward to. Through Yeshua, He's going to cross us over. Uh, which the Lord thy God will give it thee, that thou shalt set thee up great stones and plaster them with plaster. That word plaster is a uh, lime. So they set a big stone up and they put lime all over it. Why lime? Because they could, it was soft the material. They can write the law in it. That's why. Okay? Um, and thou shalt write upon them all the words of the law when thou art passed over, that thou mayest go in in the land which the Lord hath God has given thee, a land that flows with milk and honey, as the Lord God thy fathers had promised thee. And the other thing is, I'm, I'm showing you that the garden that, that was eastward in Eden is, is modern day Jerusalem. Because God took Abraham to a land that flowed with milk and honey. God took the children of Israel to a land that flowed with milk and honey. God took Abraham to the very spot coming from the north down. He took them here and cut a covenant. And he brought the children of Israel in through the gate and cut a covenant. The reason Abraham, when he came in for the, from the north, he promised Abraham he would give him the land but he had to come in through the gate but it wasn't time for Abraham and his descendants to have the land so they went into Egypt over here God you know raised them up in Egypt took them in the wilderness for 40 years and then brought them in through the gateway because this was the eastern gate and he brought them in right here now they come in into the land and possess it through the east gate that was Lucifer's gate right there the Jordan that's why when Jesus was baptized Lucifer was there if thou be the son of God and that's why uh, the Jericho, it was the Amorites that had built up Jericho and the Hittites. There was giants there. But God said, this fight's mine. All I want you to do is walk around it. And we'll get into that in another way. That's why you see the angel of the Lord always here. Why is the angel of the Lord here? This is because it's Jesus. This is the king of uh, Salem. We know that Jesus is the king of Jerusalem. This is where also uh, why you see... Um, this is the reason Jesus was baptized here, okay? Because he is the king of Salem. He is the angel of the Lord. Um, let me go back. Um, so, uh, um, 27. 
And he says, um, check this out, man, this is... Uh, and Moses with the elders of the Israel commanded the people saying, keep all the commandments which I have commanded you this day. And I'm telling you that as well as for me. And it shall be that on the day when you shall pass over the Jordan to the land which the Lord thy God will give thee, that thou shalt set thee up stones and placid them. And because now God has written it in our hearts, and it's not only, you know, in stone. And that's why they would pick stones up to stone people, because stones represented the law. The law was written in stone. That's why they would stone people, because the law was written in stone. And thou shalt write upon them all the words of the law, when thou art passed over, that thou mayest go into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, a land that flows with milk and honey, um, um, as the Lord thy God hath promised thee. Therefore I, it shall be when ye be gone over the Jordan, that ye shall set up these stones which I have commanded you this day in Mount Ebal and you shall plaster them with plaster and uh, and there shalt thou build an altar unto the Lord thy God an altar of stones thou shalt not lift up any iron tool upon them thou shalt build an altar unto the Lord thy God of whole stones and thou shalt offer burnt offerings there upon the Lord there upon to your God and thou shalt offer peace offerings and shalt eat there and rejoice before the Lord that your God and thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly very plainly watch this and Moses and the priest and the Levites spake unto all of Israel saying take heed and hearken unto Israel this day thou art become a people unto thy God thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day now listen the proclamation of the curses and Moses charged the people the same day saying these shall stand upon Mount Gershom to bless the people when ye are come over the Jordan Simeon see over here I got Simeon and Levi and Judah and Issachar and Joseph and Benjamin it's a reason for all of this and on Mount Ebal, which is curses, is Reuben, and Gad, and Asher, and Zebulun, and Dan, and Naphtali. You know why I separated them? You find out. Reuben, why curses? Reuben went up and slept with Bilhah, his father's wife. He uncovered her nakedness. Wow. Made her naked. Trees, eating the fruit, noticed they were naked. Gad sleeping with women he wasn't supposed to be sleeping with. Wow. This side revealing, opening curses and sins. Uh, I don't have time to get into it with you. Why is this, why is Shechem important? Watch this and keep going. And he said, and these shall be upon Mount Ebal, Reuben and Gad and Asher and uh, Reuben, Gad and Asher and Zebulun and Dan, Judgment and Naphtali. Um, and all the Levites shall speak and say unto the, the men of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed be the man, number one. Number one. Here it goes. Here's the blessings and the curses. Number one. Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molted image an abomination unto the Lord, the work of his hands of craftsmen, and putteth it in a secret place. And all the people answered and said, Amen. He said, Blessed is man, any man that makes an idol and puts it in a secret place and worships it. Right? That's the same thing. It's in the Ten Commandments. But now you're getting some more of the commandments. Watch. He says, number two, Cursed be he that, that setteth light by his father or his mother. And all the people said, Amen. That word light is exposed. Reveals. Like Noah. And his son Ham revealed his nakedness to set light upon, to make him naked. Wow, another revealing. This place of revealing, Dinah was defiled. Shechem revealed her. Lifted up her skirt, made her naked. In this place. Wow. Why are all of these repeating itself? Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. And all the people said, Amen. Number four. Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way. And all the people said, Amen. To lead one astray deceitfully. 
Cursed be, verse 19, but number 6. Cursed be he that prefereth the judgment of a stranger, the fatherless and the widow. And they all said, Amen. That means let it be so. If you do any of these things, Cursed be he that lieth with his father's wife because he uncovered his father's skirt. Reuben! Made her naked. Number eight. Cursed be he that lieth with any manner of beast. And all the people should say, Amen. Why is he saying this? Because when they went into the land, they had bestiality going on. Bestiality. It was in a land where the Nephilim seed was. Like as the days of Noah. They perverted not only their self, but perverted the animal seed, the DNA as well. When you go over there, this is what you're going to see. Gross darkness. Men sleeping with men. Women with women. Men with beasts. Women with beasts. Crazy, right? You see it now. Number nine. Cursed he that lieth with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his mother-in-law. Why is all of these curses revealing with the uncovering of nakedness? Sex! And all the people said, Amen. Cursed be he that smiteth his neighbor secretly. And all the people said, Amen. Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person. And all the people said, Amen. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. I stand here today as a witness to you and to me. None of that has passed away. The word of God stands true all the way to the end. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. The only thing that's different now, we're under a new covenant. And that covenant now, now deals with the inner man. Where it dealt with the outer man before. Now it deals with the inner man. Because God went straight to the root. Because as a man is, as a man, you know, it's, it'll manifest from your heart outward. So you're only seeing the the what's already taken root in his heart where the law dealt with the flesh oh because you did this this is going to happen no okay you're going to deal with that as well but God says look I got to get inside of you and change you on the inside so that doesn't happen on the outside Amen. greater let's go to uh, these two mountains why is Shechem so important um, turn a page to um, 29 verse 1 Deuteronomy chapter 29 are y'all ready to leave the party? it says these are the words of the covenant which, Moses com which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab beside the covenant which he made with them in Horeb wow so he made a covenant with them in Horeb, right? The law. And now he's making another covenant. The Abrahamic covenant was a covenant by faith. The Abrahamic covenant came before the law came. If you believe me, Moses, I mean Abraham, it was accounted to him for righteousness because he believed God, right? So the law that came first was through Abraham, through grace, through faith, right? Now, these two mountains, why is Shechem so important? Go to Judges chapter 9. Judges chapter 9. This is like, this blew me away when I read this. 
Joshua Judges. Judges chapter 9. Back in the same place. Chapter 9. Judges chapter 9, verse 7. And when they told it to Jothan, he went and stood at the top of Mount Gershom. This is the revelation of Jothan. He goes to the top of the Mount Gershom. And he went and stood at the top of Mount Gershom and lifted up his voice and cried out and said unto them, so now some big time things are going on right now. Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. And he gives them a parable about a king. And he says, The trees went forth, men. Men, Jesus said, he healed the man's eyes. What do you see? I see men as trees walking. Men are symbolic to trees. We're all planted in God's garden. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, they in Shechem. He's standing on Mount Gershom and the first tree he mentions is the olive tree. Wow. He said, he said, the trees went forth at a time to anoint the king over them, and they said unto the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor God and man and go to promote, be promoted over the trees? The olive tree is Jesus. Is he saying, you know, should I do it? It's not time for Christ to come yet. But here it is. You know, Jothan is given a parable about a king, and the first thing, he, he's on the mountain of blessing, and he mentions the olive tree. Look at the next one, he says. And the response. And the trees then said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. Wow. The fig tree. <laughs> the two trees. Kind of crazy, huh? First two he mentions at Shechem. Right? Remember the Lord said, you can eat from you can eat from this tree, but don't eat from this tree. These two trees are on a mountain. Wow. Mountains. Mount of Olives, olive tree. The fig trees are on Mount Moriah, the two mountains. Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai. He says, um, but the olive tree had said unto them, Should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor God and man and go to be promoted over the trees? And then the tree said unto the fig tree, So you got the olive tree and the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said the trees unto the vine, Jesus said, I'm the vine and you're the branches. Come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine? Wow! Jesus, the wine, the blood of the new covenant, right? Which cheereth God and man, and go and be promoted over the trees. Then said the trees unto the bramble. That's a thorn bush. That's a stick of bush. Come thou and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth you anoint me to be king over you, then come and put your trust under my shadow. So you have to leave the shadow of the Almighty and go to the thorn bush. Why is the thorns important? Because it's the curse of the ground. When they ate of the wrong tree and that curse was placed and smashed down on Jesus' head. Come under the shadow of my tree. Under the curse. Leave Gershom. Wow. Let's keep going. Here we find Moses telling them, you know, just kind of bring you back a little bit. I'm going to leave that. I thought it was kind of crazy that in this very same spot, 
Here it is, Jothan, the parable of Jothan likens these two places, first two trees that I mentioned, the olive tree and the fig tree. Here we find Moses telling them to go to these two mountains in Shechem. He divides the tribes in six. We talked about that. Um, blessing on one side, curses on the other. Um, it's pretty amazing that 400 years prior to the children of Israel crossing over, this is where God brings Abraham. This is where God brings um, uh, the children of Israel to cut a covenant with them. This is the place where God made a covenant with Abraham through circumcision. This was the place of the cutting of a covenant. Abraham was circumcised here. His entire household was circumcised here. The men in Shechem was also circumcised here. This is the place where Simeon and Levi um, uh, killed all the men of Shechem. In Joshua chapter 21 verse 21, when they crossed over, this place was called, this was given over to uh, Joseph's sons, Ephraim. This is Ephraim. That's who the United States, the tribe of Ephraim. This was given over to them. It was a city of refuge. It became a place of refuge. Shechem. Joshua made a covenant with the children of Israel in Shechem. The bones of Joseph was buried here. Don't leave my bones. Right? Abraham saw Melchizedek here. The city of Shechem was given to Joseph's, sons, uh, Joseph's son, Ephraim. This is, uh, this is where Jesus had a conversation with a Samaritan wo woman. Are, uh, remember? Here he is again. Are you greater than my father Jacob who dug this well? John chapter 4. Wow. Why is this so important? Realizing that here is where there was a covenant made by God with Abraham when he was coming into the land and also with Joshua and the children of Israel when they was coming into the land. And if we follow all the breadcrumbs that we just went through, most likely the reason this place is called Shechem between the shoulders where Abraham divided the, the two pieces and laid them open. Half on this side, blessed. Half on this side. And a deep sleep, it says, fall, fell on Abraham. You know where we find that deep sleep? That was Adam. Deep sleep fell. And God, as a smoking flax, walked between, between them and made a covenant with them. You know what? This is most likely where the first animal, when Adam and Eve sinned, and it was put out of the garden right here through the door. This is where the first covenant was made, where God cut a covenant and killed the first lamb and clothed them in the skins and sent them eastward away from the presence of God. The garden that was eastward in Eden, it falls in this area. The two trees, Gershom and Ebel. This is the first place God cut a covenant with man. And the children of Israel, he brought them back here. And he brought them here for a reason. I mean, God, you follow the breadcrumbs. And you find and you see, you know, like, wow. All of this, Dinah was defiled here. You start looking at all the little pieces and parts. And why these places are so important. And why it's here that the enemy built Jericho, the most fortified city. It's, you know, why the, why the king of Salem is here with bread and wine. As you come in through the gate, you run into the angel of the Lord. You run into the king of kings and lord of lords. Because this is his land that was taken by the enemy. And he's soon going to come and take it back. And that covenant that God cut way back then is the same covenant that we follow today because we know the fulfillment of that covenant is Jesus Christ and it still stands today. Either you're going to walk with him or choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Joshua said Joshua's name means Jesus. You can literally say Jesus said choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Either you're going to serve self or you're going to serve God. And if you serve self, well, I can guarantee it, you will be cursed.
you. You'll live a life of curses. But if you serve God, man, the land that flows with milk and honey is before you. The land that flows with milk and honey is before you. It's yours. If you haven't received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you know, you could come up here today and I'll pray with you. I'll pray with you. But if you feel like, you know, I believe today is a day that God has called us, it's time to reestablish a covenant. God has brought you and me before Mount Gershom and Mount Ebal today. That's what today is about. He's brought us back to that, that place in Shechem. We are there right now. We have been there for over an hour now. You and me have been in Shechem. And that's the word of the Lord. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. So either you can be with Simeon and Levi and Judah and Issachar and Joseph and Benjamin in the blessings, or you, hey, it's all up to you. You can come over here by Dan and Judgment and Reuben in a bare and stony place and you can be cursed. But guess what? It's all up to you. It's your choice. I'm going to tell you something. As for Joseph, me and my house, We'll serve the Lord. Who wants to serve the Lord with me? Raise your hand. Father, in Jesus' name, Amen. as a witness and a testimony, we stand here today with our hands raised to you. Father, as a rededication, as a commitment, Father, to you, that, Lord, we want to serve you. Father, I ask that you would help us and empower us by your Holy Spirit as we stand in Shechem today as a witness on Mount Gershom, Father. We want to serve you, Lord, and walk in your ways and your testaments and in your glory. And Father, if we get out of those ways, Lord, we know that curses will come upon us. But Lord, according to your word, we fall under the Yeshua, under Yeshua, Lord. We don't fall back. We don't look back. Lord, we put our hands to the plow and we look forward, Father. Father. And we thank you, Lord, yeah. for the covenant that was cut with us through your son, Jesus, yeah. Yeshua, the ultimate covenant, the original covenant that you slid in, in, the, in, in the very beginning when you slain that lamb and you covered Adam and Eve. Your word says in Revelation that the lamb was slain before the foundation of the earth, Lord. And we are under that covenant, under that lamb, yeah. under your shadow, Father, yeah. not under the bramble, not under the thorn but under the shadow of the wings of Yeshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Yahweh, our God. Hallelujah. And Father, I pray that, Father, your blessings would just flow upon us today, Lord. That we can give life to others, Lord. And tell them, Father, about you. The ultimate blessing is Jesus Christ. Jesus! 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 Thank you, Father. You're worthy, Lord. Amen. amen. And everybody amen. says, Amen. amen. amen.